everyone. This is Linda G. Robert, your Back in the Groove Again coach, helping you live your best life right now so you can love what you do. Today, I'm going to be reading Chapter 3 from the book, Being in Balance, Nine Principles for Creating Habits to Match Your Desires by Dr. Wayne Dyer. So Chapter 3, You Can't Kiss Your Own Ear. And I'll start with a quote. I care not what others think of what I do, but I care very much about what I think of what I do. That is character. Theodore Roosevelt. The opening quote from Theodore Roosevelt is both compelling and filled with irony. Your balance point is often found in feedback from those whose opinions you trust and respect. This is an exceptionally valuable option to give yourself. In concern with just your own personal assessment of your behaviors or actions at the expense of what others think can cause you to be out of balance. I'm not advocating that opinions or criticism or even praise from others in any way immobilize, upset, or flatter you. Too much emphasis on what others think can mean that praise or criticism is part of the package tipping the scale toward imbalance. What follows is a personal example to illustrate what I mean. I vividly recall my very first year teaching as a college professor in the summer session at Wayne State University in 1970. A small group of graduate students was making a presentation to the class as part of their final course requirements. I repeatedly heard twitters and outright laughter at some of the antics of the presenting group, and I sat there mystified by what was so funny. Finally, as more and more of the students looked in my direction to see my reaction to the presentation, it hit me like a ton of bricks. They were imitating me. One student had pulled his belt down to expose a dour postured protruding gut sticking out above the belt. Others in the group spoke in excessively loud voices and gesticulated vividly, wildly, sorry, all the while making indecipherable marks on the chalkboard, attic teacher in the classroom. We can actually learn a lot about how we've been perceived by others if we're able to assimilate the input. It's been my experience, particularly in helping to raise eight children, that there's often a huge imbalance between how we see ourselves and how we're perceived by the rest of the world. Becoming aware of this disparity can be exceedingly helpful in leading a more fulfilling and balanced life. You certainly don't want to base your entire existing existence about upon how pleasing you are to those around you. A balanced individual, however, is free to make the choice to change something if they're comfortable with feedback that may be unflattering. What this imbalance looks like. Perhaps the most important question in this regard is, how do you want to be perceived in this world? Anyone who responds that they don't care at all is trying to live with blinders on, a rather unbalanced style, to be sure. Of course, you care. In some cases, your very livelihood depends on your response to this question. You want to enjoy relating in a joyful, playful, intimate, loving, helpful, concerned, caring, and thoughtful manner with others. It's the nature of all of our human relationships to want to give and receive emotions and to feel connected to each other. If you also desire spiritual consciousness, then you need to be more in harmony with your spiritual source. This is a source of love, kindness, joy, beauty, non-judgment, creativity, and endless abundance. If you think that you personify all of these qualities, yet everyone else perceives you in a totally different light, then it's likely that you're living an illusion and will continue to be in a state of imbalance. To answer, the answer to how you want to be perceived in the world is, as its simplest, I want to be seen as a truthful person. When you balance the way you want to be with the way you're being received, there's a distinctly pleasurable feeling of being in harmony with life.
It's not that you're seeking approval or groveling for respect or love. It's more that you're in the world in the way that's congruent with your inner desire to be the kind of person you are. You accomplish this by first noticing when you're feeling misperceived, then determining if your words and actions match the truth of your inner thoughts. This alignment check will eventually and almost automatically give you a reading that compares what you're projecting outwardly with what you're inwardly wanting to express. Let's take a look at some of these indices. Keeping in mind that every thought you have about yourself have an energetic component. Here are some of the most obvious qualities that describe the ways you feel about yourself. Review these elements, keeping in mind that your objective is to balance what you send out in your daily interactions and behaviors with the truth within you. This, I am a loving human being. If you both desire and believe this is to be true about yourself, then you're two-thirds of the way toward being in balance in this principle. You desire Your desire to be a loving person and at the same time your truth that you are a loving person leaves only the third element, how others perceive you. If you're feeling misunderstood or unloved, then before you can perfectly balance the scales, you need to determine whether the loving human being you see yourself as and want to be is seen by others. Here are some ways of being that are counterproductive to being perceived as a loving human being and create an imbalance. A strong position of hatred toward anyone or any group of people, you're out of balance. Violence in any form, including aggressive verbal outbursts, you're out of balance. Support for weapons designed to produce megadeath explosions, you're out of balance. You enjoy being entertained by films portraying hatred and killing. You're out of balance. Verbally belittling others' beliefs and insisting that your beliefs are superior. You're out of balance. In order to realign yourself to create the balance you desire, seek the feedback of significant people in your life. Ask them if you come across as the loving human being you believe yourself to be. I'm a kind human being. You cannot be kind to me and unkind to your waiter and be in balance. When you persistently extend arrogance outward in the direction of other people, even if you feel justified in your actions, that's how you're perceived and defined. You need to know that you're not coming across as a balanced, kind person. You may indeed exemplify kindness in how you treat your children and your grandmother and even all of the children and all of the grandmothers of the world. But if you honk your horn in red-faced anger at a slow-driving grandmother who's taking her grandchildren to school, then you're way, way out of balance. The discrepancy between your own idealized self and how others perceive you is vast and it will create a real sense of imbalance within you that can manifest as a personality disorder. You know that you aren't living up to what you say about yourself and other people are pointing it out more and more frequently. You're the, I am a joyful, happy human being. In this category, your feelings are the measurement you need to pay attention to. In fact, they require your undivided attention. Do you feel good most of the time, or are you a person who looks for occasions to be offended? Do you feel happy and content, or are you outraged, easily outraged, over the misconduct of others? Does your joy turn quickly to despair when you read the newspaper or listen to news? Do people around you really think that you're a happy camper in your daily life? Do you regularly hear others telling you to lighten up or chill out and stop letting yourself get so worked up? These are clues indicating the balance or imbalance between how you see yourself and what you project to others. You're a joyful person if you live from joy. Extend joy wherever possible. And if those around you feel joyful in your presence, here are some suggestions to restore balance in this principle. 
Make a commitment to look for joy everywhere. Offer joyful commentary wherever possible. Reach out to others in cheerfulness, even if you initially have to fake it. Go on a rampage of appreciation rather than discussing the evils of the world. Use every opportunity to radiate joy. If you can let joy be your habitual way of responding to the world, you'll restore balance on the scale of how you see yourself and how others perceive your attitude of gratitude for life. If you project energy that results in others, feelings, others feeling threatened, uncomfortable, and not wanting to be around you, then you're simply out of balance. If you're unclear about your effect on others, take an inventory of those who are willing to be honest with you and discover how your self-perception matches up with their input. I am a non-judgmental human being. If you're truly non-judgmental, then it will be impossible for you to categorize or generalize individuals into groups such as old, southern, uneducated, teeny boppers, belonging to red or blue states, conservatives, liberals, or so on. A stereotype is a judgment. You cannot be non-judgmental and be critical of the different ways people talk, eat, dress, socialize, dance, or anything else. If you believe that you're non-judgmental, but admit that you have a tendency to generalize and criticize, then you're out of balance. You're due for a realignment so that your current thoughts and ultimately your behaviors will become a vibrational match to your inner self-portrait. Create a new habit of complimenting those around you. Decide that you're going to disregard stereotypes and refuse to engage in conversations that dwell on judging anyone. Turn judgments into blessings to restore the imbalance between how you want to be and how you're actually presenting yourself to the world. If you want to be a non-judgmental person and associate with others at this level, I suggest that you shift to a state of awe and bewilderment as you appreciate the beauty that's in all people and all things. Stop your habitual way of noticing what you don't like and instead look hard and deliberately for what you find pleasing. Then articulate what you've discovered as a way to reinforce the new habit of being unconditionally accepting. Even if your judgments are nothing more than thoughts, I urge you to change those thoughts immediately upon recognizing them. If you see an obese person and think he's disgusting, you're aligning with a point of attraction that attracts disgust. Rebalance this energy by sending a silent blessing to the person. On the non-judgmental side of the balance scale, think about how much love and support this person could use. I guarantee that you'll feel the difference internally, and at the same time, feel more compassionately connected to that individual. D. H. Lawrence once observed, what you intuitively desire, that is possible to you. I couldn't agree more. However, you must repeatedly ask yourself, does my intuitive desire match up with what I give to the world? When it does, balance is restored and self-fulfillment is your reward. That was chapter three of the book, Being in Balance. Nine Principles for Creating Habits to Match Your Desires, written by Dr. Wayne Dyer. My name is Linda G. Robert. I'm your Back in the Groove Again coach, helping you live your best life now so you can love what you do. Stay tuned for Chapter 4. Your addictions tell you you'll never get enough of what you don't want. Bye now.